So guys, I took the time, I checked all my posts, making sure I have enough. I checked my infill panels, I have enough of those. Next step is the hardware. So identifying what hardware, you'll get a picking ticket right here and this will list all your items. This is the easiest way for me to go through and make sure I have everything I need and something didn't get misplaced, forgotten. Uh, you know what happens on the job site, guys. So now that we've went through all our hardware, all our, all our supplies, our posts, our panels, everything, we know everything's here. We're gonna chalk our lines. Now, establishing where to place your post. We're coming in two inches. Reason being is we've cladded the, the fascia is a one inch thick fiber on product. So we want to come in two inches. That means we're one inch from the side of our blocking to where we're going to actually run our lag and we know we're going to hit our blocking. Two inches in from the side on this project is where we need to be. All lines are chalked. Now we're going to establish our corner posts. Step two. I want to talk about the different posts that we've made up. So we have an end or a termination post. If you can look, there's only one receiving panel strip and one bottom rail receiving bracket. Everything else is clean. So this will be the end or the start of your panel. And then we have an intermediate. The intermediates are basically to receive a panel on this side and a panel on this side as you're going down your proper spacing. Then there's the corner bracket. This is what we're working on now. This is the first one for me. After you chalk your lines, you want to install. Get your corner set and then you can kind of do your layout. You should already have your layout done because you should have provided blocking underneath your deck. Time to shim, guys. It's important that you get these posts plumb, and, it, and sometimes you're going to have to shim them. So we're going plate to plate. That means from the base of the bottom plate. 184 and three quarter. 184 and three quarter. That puts us at 92 and three eighths. 92 and three eighths. So what I'm doing by double checking that is if I pull this direction 92 and 3 eighths and this direction 92 and 3 eighths, the tape measures a line and I know that center. That's the way I double check. So a real easy way for me to center up the column. I have my center mark here. I pulled it from plate to plate. I double checked it to make sure I'm on center. I know that these are five inches exactly on the money. If I go two and a half inches, I put a small little pencil line. I can set it center up this line, make sure I'm parallel running on tight on my chalk line. Guys, it's going to be straight. Hey, Art Steedle here with my beautiful daughter, Daniela. We are going to install bottom rail brackets, side channels to our Feeny design rail posts. Are you paying attention? There's going to be a quiz on this later. Maybe an essay, maybe a report. You're not going to take the time to read it. Oh, easy. Be nice. <laughs> If your wife's willing to help or your daughters or your kids, Feeney makes it easy. It's really not that complicated. Or you just hire an amazing contractor to do it. Vinyl in and guys, that's our post. What do you think, Daniela? Looks nice. You got an A. I want to talk about one of the steps in installing the bottom rail of your Feeney design rail system. Um, this is set up for our lower mesh panels. Uh, you have your vinyl and you have your bottom rail. Your bottom rail every three inches is pre-drilled. That's what they're there for, allow the water to escape. But you're adding a vinyl channel has no holes in it. This is a very important step guys. You must drill out 
and match up your weep holes. The best way to do that, bottom rail, vinyl, get your vinyl set in. Once you get that in, snapped in place, showing your margins on both sides. Now the holes, the guide's there for you guys. The holes are pre-drilled in your bottom rail. Match up your drill bit size with the size of the hole. And you don't have to go every three inches. I, you could skip a hole, you can go every six inches, but it's, you must get the holes drilled in. Don't forget this step, guys. Once you get it drilled out, very careful, you don't want to scratch your new product. Move your side row into place with your square drives. Reinstall. We're cutting and getting ready to install the mesh panels. Now, have my brother Drew here. Um, he showed me a few tricks. Uh, one being you want to center the mesh panel so it does kind of have a pattern. It's like tiling a floor or something. You don't want this showing a little square at the edge right there. You want to kind of center it the best you can. Um, so in order to do so, we, we've taken the measurements. We already have them plotted down on our paper. We use those same measurements for the panel system. How much, Drew, do we need to cut off of the actual measurement post to post? Uh, seven eighths of an inch. So, we're, so we remove the seven eighths of an inch and that allows it to slide into the vinyl sides and into the bottom track. Well, the sides especially, because that's what we're cutting the sides, not the height on it. Uh, obviously, you're doing this, please, gloves. It's gonna save your hands. Safety glasses. Safety glasses are a must. You do see we have eye protection on. Uh, we learned that hard lesson before. So we find center of panel, then we lay out our measurements either way so we can center the cuts, correct? We're using an abrasive blade to cut Feeney's mesh panels. It's cutting through the stainless pretty good, Drew. I mean, I know it's hard steel, no problems, it's going through it. Um, that's it, so he's gonna cut it. And then take, take a minute and deburr the edges a little bit. You'll see that you'll have some sharp edges after you run the, the abrasive, uh, the grind, the die grinder through the edge. Hit them for a second. You're just gonna be doing the guy a favor that's carrying it up. Even with gloves on, you don't want those sharp edges. Drew uh, definitely says put the vinyl on first, slide it in to your aluminum channels. I basically have the vinyl, uh, the vinyl already set in the channels and I'm sliding the mesh panel in. Now important, when you're placing the cap, lock in one side, push down on the center. You want to hear that clicking sound. I don't know if you heard it or not. Let me try another one. But it's not locked in unless you hear that clicking sound. It's got to kind of snap in there. Hear that? That's what we're looking for. And that way, they won't come off easily.
Hey guys, so the top rail consists of three pieces. So you have your vinyl, that's gonna lock in your panel being mesh or resin or whatever you're working with. So that's, that goes, it's a 16th less than your measurement post to post. Next step, this is your bottom part of your rail. Your top rail is going to snap on top of this. It's very important that you get it straight. Lay it on top of your vinyl channel. I found that where you're coming together in a miter on your top rail, that you might want to just take a little bit of the corner off where they come together at that inside of your miter. Just a little die grinder, just, just took the edge off, took that corner off, and it seems to be fitting a lot better. So now I install. Oh, let me also mention, you wanna be sure that your vinyl on your post is level with the top of your rail. If it's sticking out past, it won't let everything seat properly, and you're gonna have a lot of difficulties. snapped into place, hear it click in, you know that vinyl's locking into the aluminum and that's what you want to hear. This is just temporary, uh, we don't have our splice in here yet, our miter splice, but let's get it set through, you ready? This is just kind of allowing us to indicate where that miter should end so we can align and make his job a lot easier on that end. This is the hardest part, trying to get it in the right position and snapped into place. Once you get going though, it's easy. Drew, you have this twisted somehow. There you go. You gotta be sure that you're running kind of straight. Run your fingers at the same time, squeeze both sides and you should be able to, hear it? snapped right into place. Guys, that's it. All we have left to do is put the matching self-tapping screws in a concealable place. We're going to hit center of post and that's going to lock this in position. At this, at this point now, we haven't tied the miter in, so we can still slide this and make that miter meet tight. When working with your miters, don't forget your corner splices. They slide in, you'll see two grooves in the lower part of the aluminum, slides right in, sets up, centered here. Now that next piece will receive right into it. It'll lock your miters in tight. I like to do this as one of the final steps. Uh, it's just attaching, screwing in your bottom rail to your bottom rail connector, which is already screwed to your post. Um, everything's done. This is, again, one of the final things we do. So they do provide self-tapping screws. I still find it better to pre-drill. Again, square drive, the black ones obviously, so they match the rail. And it's that simple, guys. You have a positive connection. You've tied your bottom rail to your connector, which is tied to your post. And it's super strong. Guys, this was a very simple process for us. Um, once we had it laid out and we knew where things were going, the panels were we cut to fit. Pretty simple abrasive saw. We were able to cut right through them. Uh, the bottom rail we had to free. We had to cut. Uh, the top rail we had to cut. Listen, 
all around for the quality and the, how amazing the finished product looks, I would have to say, I mean, it was a five on the degree of difficulty scale. I mean, it was pretty simple. Um, with the right tools, I think, you know, even a DIYer could put this together. Um, guys, I'm very satisfied with the product. I mean, it just went together really simple. Uh, it, it was easy for us and uh, it looks amazing. Um, not much I would change about this build, guys.